Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Jeff with Altcoin Buzz. Today we're going to talk about Bitcoin price, Ethereum, cryptocurrency in general, and the importance of patience. Um, I'm, I'm making this video because I see, I see some things that are coming up across the internet, chat rooms, forums, uh, just in general, comments made on this channel about things that they're seeing and observing, and also how to interpret videos that, are, that they watch and predictions by Mike Novogratz or Roger Ver or uh, Charlie Lee or uh, anybody, myself or anybody who's making projections about altcoins that'll be popular because I get the impression that if you watch my videos, you're also watching other videos and we're just going to go through a whole, whole range of things, uh, mostly focused on patience. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into this. So people are right now, believe it or not, even though Bitcoin itself is still up 16.8% and nearly all, um, nearly half of the cryptocurrencies are up still on, on the seven day because they're down on the 24 hour, people are freaking out. And I think it, I think it's a big deal that you guys freak out. Um, over things that you're getting impatient about. It's this is part of the problem with this is why in many of my videos back I talk about how you can't be watching it if you're going to be watching the market um, on the hour every hour or every day on the you know in the mornings and it's going to be affecting your mood. You have to you have to mentally mature yourself to be able to understand that things are going to fluctuate up and down and. And there is swings of the pendulum where you can watch Bitcoin move a thousand dollars in one day from left to right, depending on which way it moves. It can go up a thousand, it can go down a thousand. And we're going to be approaching that where you'll see that happen more and more. And um, I've had people, you know, watch some of my videos and tell me, man, you're 90% of your predictions are right. You're, you're like 90% correct. And then... Um, and then the next day, uh, when the market pulls back, they, they want to go back and re some people want to go back and review the predictions and, and compare and contrast. And um, they might be they might not be as favorable as they were when they were all up uh, 20, 30, 50, 60, 70, 80 percent. And because because of that, as as a person making these videos, I believe that it's important to say that, you know, it's important. Take a long-term approach to this. That's why if you even flashback on my videos, I say we're in it for the one to two year run. Okay, but I don't have a crystal ball here. I'm in it the same way you guys are, and I'm sitting here like a guy at the bar that you would meet and we're having a discussion, and you're participating in the comments and in, in the conversations that are going on. If I'm bullish on something and I say that I, I think that, um, I don't know, Ethos or formerly Bitcoins or Cardano or IOTA or EOS is going to go up. That's my opinion. You don't have to just take it and run with it and say, well, this guy said something, so I'm going to go do it. And this, this goes into a bigger problem about the internet. People watch things on the internet and then the next thing you know, they're, they're experts at something because on the internet, they watched a, a video. It could be about a conspiracy or it could be about um, a, a cryptocurrency or it could be about the president or it could be about something. And then, People all of a sudden, whatever they watch on the internet, all of, a, all of a sudden is true. So if they watch a video by me that says that Cardano is going to moonshot, um, next thing you know, they go out, they, they say it's good. Cardano is going to moonshot. And they, they take me as like, I'm like, you know, the truth or whatever. Yeah, sure. Cardano is up. And I made a video when Cardano was at two cents. But when Cardano pulls down, to, pulls back down to five cents, are you still going to love me? <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? This is how people are. Uh, but the point is, is that you can't, you have to take everything with a grain of salt. It's not all true. It's like, believe half of what you see and none of what you hear or whatever, whatever that saying is. I mean, you have to, you have to really take responsibility for your own actions. Okay. No one can manipulate you to do anything unless you allow yourself to be manipulated. So if you're saying, well, man, Jeff made a video saying that it's possible for uh, Ethereum to be $10,000. Do I think it's possible to be $10,000? Sure. Yeah, it's possible. It's also possible for Ethereum to get, uh, you know, replaced by 
Lisk or Rise or, or uh, another platform that we haven't even seen yet. Okay, so if we're talking about hypotheticals, we're only talking in hypotheticals about theories, right? We could say, well, we thought Hillary Clinton was going to win the presidency or we thought Donald Trump was going to make the economy better. I mean, yeah, there's a whole bunch of hypotheticals, but no one has a crystal ball. Some people say Jesus is coming back. Some people say Jesus is already supposed to be coming back. You know, it's like <laughs> if we believe every conspiracy that Alex Jones talks about, all we're doing is believing conspiracy and uh, none of it's true. No one has a crystal ball. And last I heard, even the people who say they have a crystal ball still don't even know what the crystal ball says for the truth. So you guys have to really, really be patient with everything. I think at the end of the day, be pragmatic, be practical, be realistic. If someone gives you their opinion, it doesn't mean that their opinion is true just because two two days later it came into the truth. And um, it's it's just uh, it's just something I have to stress with you guys because as Bitcoin here um, hit ten thousand two days ago and now it's back down to nine thousand five, it it could it could pull back to seven thousand. But do I know it's going to pull back to seven thousand? No. But it also could go up. I mean, we don't know where it's going from here, but we do know it's up over seven days. We do know that there's look look, look at Cardano. I mean. It's still, it's still all in the green. I mean, you know, there's some positions that are going to be up and still, still strong. Look at Stellar Lumens, um, and then you look at Omise Go. It's down, 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 down. Um, Power Ledger. Power Ledger's had its moments, and now it's um, in an interesting range. Vertcoin. I mean, it's up over. Seven days, it's down over the last 24 hours and up over the last hour. These things, when we're analyzing these things, we're just, we're taking a, we're taking an approach that allows us to analyze things in a way that can allow us to make the, the, uh, the appropriate bet. And then people are starting to say, oh, there's market manipulation. Yeah, that's obvious. That is obvious. That is freaking obvious. In Bitcoin, in cryptocurrency, of course, there's going to be market uh, manipulation. Your job is to understand that and not turn a blind eye to market manipulation and then make your best um, moves based on the market manipulation as you understand the manipulation to occur. When Bitcoin reaches all-time highs, you don't all of a sudden just say, okay, finally, I'm going to just jump into Bitcoin and start buying at all-time highs. No, when Bitcoin pulls back to like low levels when everyone's panicking that doesn't know what they're doing because they're following the sheep herd they're following the mentality of the sheep you know that if the shepherd says go left and you're a sheep you're going to go left but if you're a shepherd you know you're the one paving the way so that's that's the whole point is to get to a point where you're you're in it to you understand there's a game life is a game right the game of life it's just like when you go get a job at a corporation Right. If you want to move up the corporate ladder, you got to do what? You got to play the game. And the better you understand the game, the better you're going to be. It's like football. You want to go play football. You got to understand how to play the game. And you got to understand that you could potentially get injured. You could potentially become the next great thing. You know, there's a whole bunch of different things. And <laughs> I mean, for some of you who are grown, grown men, like we're talking grown men who are acting like they're 18 years old sometimes by saying that someone manipulated them into doing something. Uh, really? If you're a grown man and you're accusing another person of manipulating you to do something because you saw that Mike Novogratz said that Bitcoin could be $40,000 and it hasn't hit uh, $40,000 yet, they're manipulating you because someone put out some sort of prediction or projection? I mean, do you do you go do you start blaming History Channel for the Nostradamus predictions that didn't come true? Do you get all excited about the Mayan ruin or the Mayan uh, prophecy of 2012 that didn't come through? Y2K? I mean, come on, is this <laughs> you've lived long enough? If you're especially if you're over 30 and you're blaming other people for things, you've you've seen enough hype. Okay, hype has happened. Just look at the Mayan calendar prophecy that was supposed to be the end of the world. And how many have we had since then? No one really knows, guys. That's the point. That's the point. You have to take accountability for your own actions and do your own research. If you're listening, if you're reading a book, that book you're reading does not necessarily mean it's the 
gospel truth. It doesn't mean just because someone wrote a book on trading doesn't mean they know everything about trading. Just because someone wrote a book about bipolar disorder doesn't know they know everything about bipolar disorder. But maybe you do because you are bipolar. Because if you're the type of person who's getting excited when the market goes up, wants to praise everyone who gave the advice about the market going up, but when the market goes down, you change your tune, that's pretty bipolar. So, <laughs> and I'm not picking on you if you are. I'm saying that what we're saying is let's get better. Let's do better than that. Okay? Let's do better. Instead of having these, these emotional swings like we're, you know, emotional beings, let's be more practical and, and use our brains and use our noggins because if we do that, we'll make more educated decisions. If we jump into Bitcoin at all time highs and then when it pulls back, so we, we jumped in on emotion. We said, well, Bitcoin is at, uh, is going, go, is at 11,000, so I'm going to buy now. Really? Is that the best time to buy? Why don't you buy Bitcoin when it's at 5,000? Okay. But even buying Bitcoin at 11,000, if you believe that Bitcoin's going to 40,000, it's still a good buy. But if you're buying 11,000 and then it pulls back to 9,500, and then you're going to get all like bipolar, then you're going to get all depressed and start telling people who, who told you that Bitcoin was going to be $40,000. So the point is, guys, take responsibility, do your own research. And in doing your own research, realize that everything you hear on the internet is not gospel truth. Okay? So no one has a crystal ball. No one can predict the future. Not even the president of the United States. Not the president of the UN. Not your boss. Not your not the CEO of any company. Okay? Not Satoshi Nakamoto. Not um, Vitalik Buterian. Not Charlie Lee. None of these guys have a crystal ball of where it's going. They're all speculating the same way you are. Your job is to speculate the best way that you can to get the mo most return on investment for you, okay? So when you're watching videos on YouTube, and, I, and I'm not just speaking for myself because I know if you're watching my videos, you're watching about 10 other videos down the line because that's what I do. If I'm watching YouTube, I get video after video after video. I don't just take it from one person. And then I'll get uh, differ, differing opinions. And then I'll go do my own opinion or go go make my own decisions. So um, I think it's good that you guys are doing the research and watching videos. But I don't think it's good that if you take everything you hear and then apply it as gospel truth. So if you watch a video by, I don't know, Data Dash and he makes a video about Substratum and it goes up, it doesn't mean that he's like some sort of prophet. If I make a video about Cardano or IOTA and they go up, it doesn't mean I'm some sort of prophet. It just means that I saw something in that particular position that made me think that it was a good buy at that time. Or LISC. You guys were giving me props for LISC. You gave me props for IOTA. You gave me props for Cardano. But I also am going to sit here and say they could all pull back. And when they pull back, are you going to still feel the same way about that video? Just because it went up? Did you take your profit when it went up? Or are you still writing it out? Me, I'm still writing it out. I didn't even really take profit. I took profit on Cardano. That was it. The other stuff, I, I'm, I'm holding my IOTA position, even though I'm up. You know? I'm holding my Bitcoin position. I was buying Bitcoin when it was at $300. I hold my Bitcoin still. <laughs> because I think it's going to go up. If I wanted to, I could make money on Bitcoin right now. Okay? And pull out of the market. You could too. I was buying Ethereum when I was at, I actually, I didn't buy Ethereum when it was at $13, but I could have. But I, my first time I got into Ethereum was around $200. I could take profit on all my Ethereum. I could take profit on all my Litecoin right now. I buy Litecoin under 50, you know? I mean, there's many positions I could take profit on if I wanted to, but I, it's because I take accountability for my own investments. I'm, I, I believe that the market's still got a long way to go up. And I'm not impatient about it. If it does dump and it falls out from underneath us and, and the United States government comes in and restricts it and says no, no more crypto, that was the risk that I was willing to take because I didn't put in any more than I could afford to lose. Okay. And I realized that right now I, I am up in all my positions, like the ones that I was explaining to you just now. I'm not up in every single position. There are some positions where I'm down. Um, if I think about it out loud, let's see, which one am I down on? Let's see, I'm up on NEO, I'm up on IOTA, I'm up on Litecoin. 
I'm up on Ripple. I'm up. I'm down on Bitcoin Cash. I am down on Bitcoin Cash. So there's one right there. I'm I'm up on Lisk. I'm about even on a Mise Go. But yeah, I'm definitely up on EOS. That's an easy one to be up on. I'm up on Ethereum Classic. So it doesn't matter though. the The point is is that I could take profit, pull out all my money in the market, but I'm in it for the long haul. And I think you guys should be too. So patience with cryptocurrency, patience with Bitcoin. Um, but most importantly, you have to take responsibility for your own actions. There's no one sitting there with a gun telling you to do anything. And if you're the type of person who's going to um, not accept responsibility for any of your own actions, then you have to really work, take a look at why you're, why you're blaming other people for um, things that are happening in, in, in your investment strategy. And that's the truth. And if you have any problems with um, me saying that, please, by all means, leave a comment. Explain to me why, um, why someone else should be responsible if you make money or lose money. Because if you make money, does that mean that you owe somebody who gave you the advice? Do you owe Data Dash? If you if you invest in Substratum, do you owe Data Dash any bit of money for um, making money right now on Substratum? Do you owe me anything for investing in Cardano when it was at two cents? No, you don't. So that's because you you made that decision to go ahead and and make that call based on videos that you might have watched by me and other people. That's the point, guys accept responsibility. And if you're not mentally ready to do that, then go reflect on how you can get ready to make those wise, those educated decisions and take responsibility for your own trades. So that's what it comes down to, guys. I'm like a guy that you meet at the bar and you have a conversation with. You bounce ideas off me. You, 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 you hear me talk. You hear me um, speculate. But at the end of the day, I'm just a guy that you're bumping into along the way. You yourself are responsible for your own actions and that's what's important that once you come to terms with that you'll be a whole lot more mature and prepared to to invest in this and 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 watch this thing go as it goes up do i think the bull run for the cryptocurrency market is over absolutely not could it be over sure it could end tomorrow united states government donald trump could say no more bitcoin in the u.s that's going to affect the market okay we're all aware of that but once you accept that risk then you can then you're ready to look at the upside. Anyways, guys, this is Jeff with Allcoin Buzz. See you later.